Catechism 101. This is what you need to know. You know the story. The good Lord is talking to the twelve. And he tells them, I need y'all to go into the city, Peter and John. You'll see a man carrying water. You are to follow that man. And when he goes to the house, you tell the owner of the house that I need use of the house to prepare my Passover meal. My brothers in Christ, who is a certain man carrying a jug of water? Why isn't he called by name? Why doesn't anybody know who he is? This is what you need to know. This is the words of Paul Harvey, the rest of the story. He's got all 12 apostles around him, including Judas. If I tell you to go to this certain man's house, if I tell you to go to Mark's house, then Judas is going to show up at the Last Supper. And then we have no Mass. We have no Eucharist. We have no priesthood. He knows Judas is listening, so he's telling Peter and John, when you go to town, you'll see a man carrying water. He's carrying water because he's a religious. Only men who were religious, an essence Jew, John the Baptist, would be carrying their own water. That's how you will recognize the certain man. You know his name when you see him, and you'll know the house at which I'm at. But if I speak to it, then Judas will come early. This is why he's going to have to leave the Last Supper and meet us at the Garden of Gethsemane, which is why you'll learn that shortly. Everything is for a reason. My brother and sister in Christ, when the good Lord, if you notice, did you listen closely? He said, I'm going to lay my garments down. I'm going to wash your feet, and then I'm going to pick my garments back up and put them on. I'm going to be stripped of my garments at the crucifixion, my human garments, and then I'm going to resurrect into my divine garments. He said it earlier in John's gospel. When I lay down, I'm going to pick back up. He's trying to tell them, this is what you're going to see. They're going to strip me of my garments, and the next time you see me, you'll see me clothed divinely. My brother and sister in Christ, the reason why he's washing 12 men's feet up here is because there are two sacraments that came at the Last Supper. One is the Eucharist, and the other is the priesthood. If he doesn't anoint the guys, the 12 men, then they will not be part of the priesthood. Then they can't do this in memory of me. And if you go back to Moses and Aaron, then you would have realized that when he anointed Aaron and his three sons, he had to anoint them, usually their entire body. Eventually, it became just their hands and feet. But for them, they now get it. Now, according to tradition, not all the church fathers speak to this, we do believe a lamb was present at the Last Supper because it's a Passover meal. It would be hard to have a Passover meal, have the apostles prepare it, not knowing what waits for them. So do we believe that they possibly consumed the lamb? Yes, we do. Do we believe that after the lamb was consumed, he stopped in the middle of the meal, took his garments off, washed their feet, ordained them, put back on his garments, dipped his food in the plate, gave it to Judas to give him the hors d'oeuvre. Judas leaves now. I call down the Holy Spirit, and this is my body, and this is my blood, the start of the church. My brother and sister in Christ, in one evening, he ordains the start of Holy Mother Church, the descendants of the Jews, the 12 tribes, and the 12 men. And he says that it's now going to be about my body and blood, soul, and divinity. It's going to be the cup of blessing. What you and I do tonight is a foretelling that is now going to take place for all generations. Manna fell every day in the desert for 40 years. Every day. And when they go to the promised land, they actually cross the river Jordan right where the good Lord was baptized. That's not coincidental that Yahshua leads them in the promised land, and right where Christ is baptized is where, where quote, Yahshua entered. If manna stopped falling when they entered, it's because there's a new Yahshua. There's a new promised land. There's a new manna. My brother and sister Christ is so powerful. For you to ignore the Eucharist, Padre Pio is right, we'd be better off without the Son than the Eucharist. It's in the details. Amen? Amen. Amen.